So welcome back to Half A Hot Rods. Uh, today's fun is going to be working on something I never thought I would be working on, uh, Mini Cooper. This is my wife's uh, little hot rod. It's actually for a BMW-ish foreign car. It's a lot of fun to drive. Uh, supercharged four-cylinder, six-speed manual. Uh, it's the sidewalk edition, which really doesn't mean anything other than trim and different colored seats and that some fool paid four thousand dollars more for that when it was new uh, but it is a super fun car to drive but it recently developed a uh, bad vibration when you're accelerating and as soon as you let off the throttle or push in the clutch acceleration or the vibration goes away so does the acceleration actually and everything i've read and i've seen in the past tells me that's driveline uh, these, of course, have front-wheel drive, so they've got CV axles. Uh, so we're going to dig in. I've got some new axles for it uh, and pull it apart, hopefully get those replaced and get it put back together with new ones, and my vibration will be gone. So we'll let you know here shortly. Well, it only took me about two and a half hours, but I've got both sides apart, uh, comparing the old ones to the new ones. Uh, both uh, inner joints, the boots were split and they were spilling all their guts out. The other side, the passenger side, actually fell apart as I was pulling it out. So it's actually a pretty simple job. You just uh, pull the tie rod in and pull the ball joint out of this one, the lower control arm, and then you can swing the strut and the brakes and everything out of the way without disconnecting anything and then it just slides out you can see in there where it goes into the transmission uh, you got to give it a little tug because there's a snap ring you can see on the end of this guy right in there this side was pretty simple the passenger side wasn't really more complicated it's just that this little carrier deal like a carrier bearing on a rear drive shaft. Uh, two of the bolts were real easy to get at. And then the other one, you couldn't see it and touch it at the same time. You needed about 14 extensions and two uh, universal joints in order to reach it. So that was lots of fun and may have involved some cursing and maybe a thrown wrench, but it's out of there. And looks like my new ones are gonna be the correct ones. So we'll get it put back together and come back and look at the finished product and let you know if we fixed it. So I've got the passenger, I'm sorry, I got the driver's side done and I'm working on the passenger side. I'm back to that one bolt that you can't see and touch at the same time. So we got a series of universal joints working together here and something to help hold that bolt in there while I'm trying to slide it into position. If you put just enough masking tape on it to hold that bolt in the end of the socket, but not so much that you won't be able to tear it, so it'll take some trial and error, that'll help keep it in place while you're fishing it through the maze of hoses and wires and other miscellaneous nonsense that's under there. Uh, the other thing I did is uh, my wobblies or universal joints were a little too wobbly. They wouldn't stay where I wanted them to. So I wrap them in electrical tape, that stiffens them up just a little bit, uh, again, to just help fish them through the maze of stuff that's under there. So hopefully this will be enough to get it together, and we'll be coming back to show you it's all done. an idea what we're working with here on this last bolt to hold the bracket in. You can see the blue from my masking tape, that's the socket where the bolt head is. And then if we follow the chrome, that's my series of extensions with electrical tape on the universal joints. It goes down through the cross member back here to my ratchet. So I can barely get my hands in the top to study those universal joints. And we did get it started and got it snug down uh, but I just, I wanted to show you what I was talking about with this being a 
pain in the neck to reach. You can see the bolt head in there. It's slipped off now. When I got it snug, it just kind of pulled out of the tape. So that worked actually just the way I wanted it to, which is a shock. So now the rest is pretty simple CV axle replacement that I'm sure there's a million videos of. But we're going to put the axle back through the hub. Then we'll put the lower ball joint back through the control arm, reconnect the tie rod in, and put the wheel back on, and then we uh, say a little prayer that it's actually fixed. We know that the drive lines were bad, so it was definitely a problem. Just don't know if it was the problem until we go to test drive. So we'll come back after I've got it all back together and see what we got. Well, we took the Mini for a test drive, and the good news is the vibration's all gone. Uh, took it out, it, it was great. Vibration completely gone. Pulled over to start video so that we could celebrate the win, and I got this clunk, 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 bang, bang, and now the car doesn't move at all anymore. So we have a new problem. So we went and got the trailer and brought it home, and now we'll see if we can get it unloaded and figure out what the heck's going on. I'll let you know. Well, I was hearing a weird noise from the driver's side, so I went ahead and pulled it apart first. And to give you an idea, this is the old shaft, the one with the vibration. That's what the splines that go inside the transmission look like. Really not bad. I suspect that the problem was inside the boot where the ball and sockets are because they were literally falling apart, pulling apart when I brought it out. This is the new one that I had put in and just now pulled out. And you can see it looks like somebody took a grinder or a hammer to the splines on that guy and just wrecked them. Wrecked them. Heck, damn near killed them. All right. So I would say that that's trash. We'll be heading back to the parts store to show it to them. And then we'll wait two or three days for them to order another one in because it's a mini. Man, I wish this was a Chevrolet. We probably wouldn't even be doing this. Stand by for a finished product. Well, the Mini Cooper is done, uh, except for I have to wait for a special fluid to come in so I can top off the transmission. And here's what the problem was. I'll try and get that so the light's not right in your eyes. This little snap ring here has to engage inside the transmission. And it felt like, let's see if I can spin it around. It was engaged to me, but my parts guy actually did some research and found out that it's pretty common with aftermarket axles for people to have trouble in a Mini if you don't spend $600 on BMW ones. It's common for them to have trouble with that engaging inside the transmission. And at some point you turn and it spits it out the side and then it doesn't move anymore. So that's what it was. We got it all back together. I test drove it. Uh, no vibrations. No spitting the axle out this time. Uh, what we had to do to make sure it was engaged was once it was installed in the car, and then this end that was out through the disc brake rotor on the front you take a, a punch and just set it in the end of that and just crack it with a dead blow hammer and that sends the shock all the way through and then this guy seats the way it's supposed to so that's what I did and everything appears to be working well now now I just have to wait for my fancy special $15 quart fluid to come in so that I can top it off and be done with it anyway all done by a guy with Little to no experience, none with minis, none with BMWs. And, you know, basic hand tools and the help of the internet. So if I can do it, anybody can do it. Until next time, good luck.